Let me take you through the activities together with my colleague, uh, Professor Mark Franklin, who is the co-director of the uh, Udo Observatory in Public Opinion, Political Elites and the Media. Let us take you briefly through the activities of 2011 within this uh, uh, observatory. Uh, the preceding um, uh, speaker has been making a football analogy and talking about the difficulties that parties have playing uh, football with ping pong ball, etc. Uh, it's not the only difficulty there. One of the difficulties is that there are not many spectators in the stands. There is no curva. And uh, we are in this observatory particularly interested in those who try to watch that, uh, that game into uh, public opinion. So the focus of um, what we would like to provide is uh, to analyze the attitudes and the preferences of publics of the media and of the elites. So far we have uh, focused quite a lot on uh, the publics and of the elites, in particular uh, political parties um, um, uh, and candidates, but we have also a current project going on uh, which, we, which we will start next year, which will uh, deal more precisely with media. Uh, we want to, in this uh, observatory measure the extent to which these uh, trends that we can uh, identify or try to identify in which um, proportion they converge or diverge um, in the different fields of, of interest. And finally, we would like to measure and explain the direction in which these attitudes are moving. And there the social sciences give us quite a lot of tools uh, mostly, of course, survey methods, but also other forms of data gathering that allow us to uh, collect the necessary data to shed further light on these, on these uh, important, we think, developments. Um, we would like to give you now an overview of some of the key projects, not all of them, but some of the key projects that we have been dealing with throughout uh, the, the past year or in a couple of, uh, uh, in a number of cases, even for for longer than, than the last year. So let's start maybe with um, Piridale. Mark. Okay, uh, this, this unlovely acronym uh, stands for the creation of an infrastructure to study uh, public opinion in Europe and uh, the, other, the other components that have to come together at the time of a European Parliament election. Um, public opinion, political parties, candidates, media, all have to come together to link citizens with an electoral decision. And um, understanding the, the way in which this happens, understanding the way in which citizens process information, understanding the way in which the information is provided for citizens to process, is, is a scientific endeavor. Uh, and in 2009, we were funded by DG Research to the tune of two and a half million euros to conduct a scientific audit of, uh, of democracy in Europe at the time of the European Parliament elections. What we were doing was in fact uh, conceived and, and funded as an infrastructure design study. The idea was to provide a blueprint for a permanent means of monitoring the quality of democracy in the European Union. Uh, unfortunately, since that uh, money was given to us and since our design has been completed, uh, things have moved on and there is no longer any route by which a newly designed infrastructure can become permanent. Um, and um, so at the moment we are spending a great deal of our time trying to figure out how we're going to conduct a study of the 2014 European Parliament elections when they come. Um, and that is, that is something that I've no doubt that the European Parliament will be hearing more about. In 2009, for the European elections, we have also uh, conducted, <clears throat> we also have conducted uh, almost uh, some kind of experiment, experiment in the field of public opinion research uh, concerning uh, the European elections. We uh, launched so-called EU Profiler. This was a voting advice application offered throughout all of the European uh, Union member states and beyond even. 
Um, uh, this was a, a voting advice application that attracted two and a half million users uh, and almost a million um, profiles have been uh, established by the, by the system. Uh, it was yeah, a huge success and it allowed us to gain a lot of data, a lot of insights <clears throat> coming from that uh, huge data collection that is complementing what uh, the Pirate Deu uh, study has been undertaking. We are right now, throughout uh, 2010 and 2011, we have been busy trying to put an or some order into these uh, massive amounts of, of data, which have on the one hand 8,800 positions of political parties throughout uh, the European Union, which are documented, uh, and we have on the other hand 900,000 uh, profiles of individual users, and we're trying to bring them together and see how they overlap and why, uh, why they overlap or why they don't. And uh, this, uh, this treatment of the data has taken us a, a lot of time. There are first publications that uh, are coming out of this uh, endeavor. The first article has been published this year, and um, more are to come. I can now announce that all the data that has been generated by this uh, uh, monumental project are now freely publicly available as of yesterday in the public uh, opinion data with, contained within this uh, project have gone uh, freely accessible on the UDU Data uh, Center website. Internet voting in Estonia was another uh, uh, project that has um, you know, kept us busy in 2011 with the uh, second time that the Estonian electorate could vote over the internet in national elections, following up on the 2007 experience. Since 2005, uh, we at UDU are following very closely um, what this innovation in voting technology uh, does to democracy in one of the EU member states. Uh, the uh, Estonian case is a pioneering case, uh, not just in Europe, but worldwide. Since 2005, uh, in a number of consecutive elections at the local, uh, at the national, and even at the European level, Estonian voters have the possibility to cast their vote over the internet. And here we have been interested in collaboration with the State Chancellery, with the Council of Europe as well, uh, um, uh, to analyze to what extent the introduction of internet voting has an impact on politics, to what extent it has an impact on uh, um, the voters themselves and what this all does um, basically to democracy. And uh, we have the most recent report that consolidates the insights that we have, what we could gather since 2005 in a structured uh, series of surveys and of analyses. Uh, this report has just been finished now and is in the hands of the National uh, Election Committee and uh, will be published very soon of course, on the, on the website of, the, uh, of our observatory within the UDU website. That's still you. Puzzled by policy is still me. Uh, yet another, yes please, yet another uh, uh, project which, is, uh, which uh, has started this year and it is, uh, is uh, co-funded by the uh, European Commission uh, the main, the global aim of this, uh, of this project is basically um, to apply somewhat the logic of the EU profile, which allows people to profile themselves and compare their demands vis-a-vis the political offer, vis-a-vis -vis the stances of the political parties. We apply the same logic in a large consortium with a number of partners uh, to policy proposals where ordinary citizens in four different pilot uh, schemes are able to actually profile themselves vis-a-vis, -vis, in this case, immigration policy and compare their stances in the field of immigration policy with policy proposals that are, that are uh, abundant in this, in this field in order to find out where, they, where these individual uh, voters, uh, users stand vis-a-vis -vis not only the policies but also the stakeholders in the field of immigration policy that are uh, positioning themselves on the domain, in, the, in the different dimensions of immigration uh, policy. So this is an ongoing project um, which uh, will still last for a, 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 a two, two more years and uh, is, is very innovative in the, in, again in the field of 
public opinion um, at the crossroads with uh, the uh, production of public policy. Okay, well, now, as, uh, as, as Alexander has made clear, uh, one of the things that the public opinion um, observatory is concerned about is understanding better the way public opinion works, understanding better uh, the way in which uh, people respond to the political offer. A second thing, as he just mentioned, is helping people to link themselves to the political offer and to the policies that are, that are underway. A third thing that I'm going to talk about now very briefly is trying to make the expertise of the academic community more accessible to stakeholders of various kinds, to policymakers, to journalists, to commentators. Uh, and the Udo Spotlight series, of which there have now been three, uh, take a topical issue and uh, address it uh, in a way that br brings uh, the, the expertise of people who study public opinion to bear when it comes to interpreting the, um, the findings. As it says here that we have had three reports so far, the most recent one is, uh, relates to the extent to which public support for Europe is robust or appears to be robust to the incredible avalanche of bad news, uh, not to mention the first genuinely incontrovertible evidence of incompetence on the part of the European Union. Amazingly enough, uh, public support for Europe is standing up quite well uh, in the face of this avalanche. Uh, European politicians may have an incredible problem of dealing with the European economy, but they do not simultaneously, uh, it seems, have a crisis of confidence on the part of European citizens. Oh, this is also me. Um, this is uh, another project that, uh, that the European uh, Public Opinion Observatory is, is, is concerned about. It's more of a training project. We are concerned with uh, the training in research of the next generation of scholars who obviously will eventually replace us uh, as, as uh, experts on democracy in Europe and the uh, democratic credentials of the institutions of democracy in Europe, the way in which elections are conducted, the way in which campaigns are, are conducted, the way in which parties present themselves, and the way in which uh, citizens come to their political decisions. Uh, we actually piggybacked this enterprise on the uh, Pyridaeu uh, exercise. Pyridaeu was collecting data about all of these, uh, these matters. And um, the elect them enterprise was using the data generated by Pyridaeu to uh, help train uh, tomorrow's researchers in the various techniques involved. All right, uh, another, uh, yet another project, I'm going to be brief on this one, uh, that was directed uh, for, within the UDU framework, uh, for the uh, European Economic and Social Committee, uh, and uh, was directed within UDU by Dr. Didier Chabanet. Uh, so uh, the involvement of a, a huge number of researchers throughout all of Europe, uh, uh, trying to shed some light on uh, the civil society consultation mechanisms uh, within uh, uh, European policy matters, and there is a report, quite a, uh, uh, um, an extensive report and lots of data that have been produced and that have been published very recently by the uh, EESC, and Yudu has uh, obtained also the right to now publish this report uh, within its own reports series that uh, I invite you to have a look at. On the events side, the uh, observatory was, uh, was also very busy this year, just two, uh, two events that I, I highlighted here, but I'm not going to, to go into details on those. But the policy training, I would like to underline, we had, the, uh, we had a demand coming from the, uh, the, social, uh, uh, the socialists and democrats, 
the group in the parliament who uh, wanted to spend uh, a study day at the EUI and uh, with you do and discuss with us, have, have an insight, break out from the European Parliament and have some kind of food for thought from our academic point of view on the developments in the post-Lisbon uh, era. And uh, this was uh, um, <clears throat> an initiative that is, was designed for the uh, uh, Socialists and Democrats but can be designed for any political group in the European Parliament, and we're trying to we're trying to foster these kind of activities because they're not only beneficial for those who, that come to us in Florence. It's only also highly beneficial to us to have uh, uh, high level high level uh, uh, practitioners within our premises and to be able to discuss with them what has been uh, going on in the uh, uh, at the European level since, for example, in this case the um, implementation of the Treaty of Lisbon. A few words on, on the outlook within our uh, observatory. Uh, we want to further refine the, the data analysis uh, on the data that we have, on this vast amount of data that we have gathered within the Pirideo and the EU profile project. This gives us a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, room to uh, undertake innovative analyses. Uh, we want to do the same with internet voting there as well. We have gathered a lot of, of uh, data and expertise that allow us now to work comparatively because Estonia is not the only place where internet voting take, takes place. The last trial in Norway this year, in Switzerland, etc. Um, we want to uh, coordinate, uh, serve as the coordinating platform for an upcoming European social survey um, leg, uh, the next wave that is, that is going to include a whole battery on measures of the attitudes by citizens towards democratic institutions throughout Europe. So a, a huge battery will be for the first time that we have comparative data on attitudes of citizens towards democracy that go beyond the classic question that is contained in the Euro barometer about satisfaction with democracy, which has obvious limits. Uh, to its interpretation. Uh, so we're very excited about, about that data that we will be able to, to look at very soon. We want to further develop the Consortium for European Research on Elections. There is, maybe Mark, you want to, to add something Keep going. more. But um, uh, other than that, of course, you see the date down here on this last slide of ours, uh, 2014, our observatory looking at public opinion, uh, the elites and the media, uh, has, of course, uh, a very, uh, very specific high season uh, throughout the years, and this is every five years, uh, the, the rendezvous with the uh, public opinion in Europe, which is the European elections, European parliamentary elections. We're in 2000, at the end of 2011 now. In 2012, we want to start preparations for the 2014 elections, and uh, we started our brainstorming already of what we want to do. Uh, for sure, there will be another uh, election study, we hope so, we are looking for the financing of this. For sure, uh, uh, there will be another or similar tool like the EU profiler in Internet Times. Uh, it's difficult to foresee what, what will be uh, there in three years' time, but some kind of following the idea of profiling, letting people profile themselves and compare their preferences with uh, the opinions or the stances of political parties, something the like uh, is, is, is for sure going to, uh, to appear within our, our observatory and, um, and this is uh, basically the, the main goals of our observatory. Thank you for your attention.